Hey guys, welcome to another PACQ literature review. I'm Jimmy Pruitt, an ED clinical pharmacy specialist and founder and CEO of Pharmacy and Acute Care University. Today I want to talk to you guys about this very interesting article. It is titled The Initiation of a Discharge Pharmacy Within a Busy Urban Emergency Department, the First Year. This was conducted by Daniel Fisher, Alicia Patel, Adrian Parati, Samantha Baslow, and my good friend Laura Selmans. So for some background, discharge medications are an important aspect of patient treated in emergency department. Initial treatment of acute conditions within the ED often requires prompt treatment with medications, but just as important is the continuation of therapy in the outpatient setting to prevent relapse into acute illness or future exacerbations of chronic conditions. The literature has reported that patient noncompliance with prescribed therapies is a frequent occurrence and has been reported in 50 to 90 percent of patients following ED visits. And this non-compliance can be due to a host of things such as low health literacy, conflicting medical information or fear of adverse effects and drug interactions. But one of the things that can be easily found is that some patients find it very challenging to obtain these medications once leaving the emergency department or they lose their prescription, and ER providers are historically known for not being able to be contacted once patients leave the emergency department. Add to the fact that this is for patients that have access to pharmacies nearby. In areas that are underserved communities, they traditionally do not have pharmacy access and are sometimes coined pharmacy deserts. Add to that that Patients have to drive quite far distances to be able to get medications that they actually can afford due to the lack of insurance or being underinsured for prescription medications. So this led to the authors creating a discharge pharmacy within the emergency department, staffed by emergency medicine clinical pharmacy specialists with the help of pharmacy technicians as well. Their discharge pharmacy was only for patients seen in the emergency department and not available to outside staff, and it was available 20 hours per day, seven days a week. When they created this program, it was developed as a cost-neutral initiative to cover expenses of added pharmacy personnel in operating with cost calculations based on projected prescription numbers and insurance reimbursement rates. Something that really interests me was What was the emergency medicine pharmacist doing at such a busy center in addition to all of this? So the responsibilities outside of discharge medications were order verification, bedside response to emergencies. That's going to include trauma, strokes, intubation, cardiac arrest, and acting as the primary preceptor for pharmacy students and residents, as well as overviewing the work of the pharmacy technician at that time. However, the pharmacy technician was able to perform prescription entry, insurance adjudication, and billing in addition to managing the operational needs of the retail pharmacy, including medication ordering and restocking. The pharmacy technician also collected medication histories from patients to be admitted from the ED. Now, when discussing their formulary, this was actually created based on historic prescribing practices at UCM with an emphasis on high-risk medications. The formulary contained approximately 260 medications and is regularly evaluated for the necessary additions and deletions. The pharmacy was contracted with a majority of the pharmacy benefit managers in Illinois to process prescriptions through insurance. For patients who were under or uninsured, nearly all of the 260 formulary medications was offered at a fixed cost of either $5 or $10. And this was done because they were able to utilize 340B drug pricing program to contract pricings to allow for these accessible cash prices. So in terms of the pharmacy workflow, prescriptions were primarily sent via e-strip to the discharge pharmacy once the patient's disposition was determined all ED patients were offered discharge prescription services or given an option of having medications filled prior to discharge, having that prescription electronically sent to an outside pharmacy, or they were sent home with a paper prescription, giving them some flexibility. So once that prescription was sent to that ED retail pharmacy, 
the pharmacy technician then performed the initial review to determine the availability of that medication, the insurance status of the patient, and the ability of the patient to afford the medication. At that point, the pharmacist performed a clinical review to determine the appropriateness of the medication using the lab values, clinical diagnosis, the note, and recent outpatient field records that was available through the EMR to address potential errors, interactions, or opportunities to optimize the discharge counseling. So what they found in their first year is that they filled about 10,000 prescriptions for 5,700 unique patients, and that represented 13% of all patients discharged from the ED during that time. Of note, the median age was 37 years old, with about 61% being female, 90% of their patients identified as Black or African American. In a financial class description, they had 50% with Medicaid, 15.8% with Medicare, 22.6% had private insurance, and 11.6% of patients were self-pay. So when medications were broken down by category, 42% were billed to the patient's insurance, 56.7% was actually filled using the reduced cash pricing, and 03 were used utilizing those drug manufacturer coupons. And 07 was for prophylaxis medications built through either insurance or Medicaid voucher with zero out-of-pocket costs to the patient. What was unique was how the ED pharmacist was able to provide their expertise and over the course of the first year in operations, the pharmacist made 436 interventions on discharge prescriptions. The most common intervention was optimization of antibiotic use, followed by the correction of an inappropriate dose or frequency of a prescription. So that was the first year of this ED retail pharmacy. And when looking at the later parts of this article, they mentioned a few things. They mentioned that through implementing an on-site discharge pharmacy, patients were provided with an affordable and accessible way to get their discharge prescription and affording the ED pharmacist an opportunity to optimize therapy and reduce prescribing errors prior to the patient leaving the department. They mentioned that in previous literature that looked at the impact on pharmacist education and a subset of patients discharged on anticoagulation, they found that compared to no discharge counseling, patients that actually received discharge counselings by ED pharmacists were significantly less likely to have an admission or an ED return visit within 90 days. 1% of patients returning with ED counseling compared to 12%. And those patients had decreased issues regarding the administration of the medication, adherence, or drug interactions. Also, the authors described a few studies done by Caesar and colleagues that prospectively reviewed discharge prescriptions and found an intervention rate of 10%, including error prevention and medication optimization. Another study done by Enzan and colleagues identified errors in 13.5% of prescriptions reviewed, with the wrong dose, wrong frequency, or wrong strength being the most common errors. And most recently, there was a pilot study conducted over a 12-week period in the ED of a large academic medical center that identified medication-related problems in 41% of discharge prescriptions, with the pharmacist intervening on 18.5% of total prescriptions. So overall, this seemed to be a phenomenal thing for the patients, for the hospital system, and just getting ED pharmacists more involved in the complete process of these patients from when they come in to when they're discharged. But there were some things to consider, and the authors really put this out there for us. If you're starting a program like this in your ED, this will ideally be done in conjunction with increased pharmacy resources like additional FTEs for pharmacists and technicians. Another thing to consider is that despite the use of pharmacy technicians to help with the operational functions and pre-prescription filling, discharge services represent a substantial time commitment from ED pharmacists and create competing priorities between critically ill ED patients and patients waiting for discharge. The authors reported separate pharmacists dedicated to each of the discharge and acute care service lines would ideally be in place to optimize and expand services provided to both populations. And the authors also warn of the increased resources that come for the initial cost and time necessary to establish a discharge pharmacy. The costs associated with purchasing medications for the inventory, 
purchasing software necessary to process prescriptions, and hiring additional staff represents a substantial investment and may be prohibitive for certain institutions. Large medical centers with associated outpatient pharmacies outside of the ED may be better positioned to establish similar services or expand current operations to include the ED population. So with great success, what the authors plan to do next is look at the pediatric population and see those that are high, high risk for noncompliance and accessibility of certain medications. They also want to do more comprehensive medication reviews with these patients and get more in-depth with preventing prescription errors. So my big takeaways from this paper are that this is something that ED pharmacists can look into. This is a unique thing that potentially can get you more FTEs and give you more control over the medication use system from the beginning of the patient's stay to the end of the patient's stay. But again, with this comes some things we need to consider. You need more FTEs. We need certain systems. We need to learn the outpatient pharmacy software, and we need to make sure we have pharmacy technicians. One thing that I can see this being very great at is also expanding on an already existing medication history technician program and a med rec program as well, because this is something that I see being very great for those programs that are not very high acuity, but something that can get you more FTEs if you have a little bit more of a 50-50 clinical and operational role. I was able to actually see this in person, and those pharmacists out in Chicago are doing a phenomenal job being able to balance the needs of their acute care and their patients that are getting discharged. And I think it's something that all of us should look at and definitely read this paper to get more of a complete understanding of the things talked about today. And I thank you guys for listening to another PACU Literature Review.